Bison Basketball Show with NDSU head coaches Dave Richmond and Jory Collins. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Life in the Summit League, it can be a little bit treacherous this time of year. Provide gray hairs for these head coaches more so than we like to talk about here with what's been going on around the schedule and how tough it is to win at home and on the road. Welcome into the Bison Basketball Show. My name is Jeff Colhane here with NDSU men's basketball head coach David Richmond. Coach just for men needed at the house after what this last saying, weekend. What are you saying, subtle hints? You're starting uh, to see a few no. grays pop up. Uh, yeah, I mean, you live with five women at home, and uh, <laughs> you coach mid-major college basketball. What do we say, the book that we're going to write? Uh, oh, hotel yeah. eggs and bus drivers? That's but, right. Um, certainly, it, it's a journey, um, uh, but a fun one. Yeah. We are now through almost the first month of conference play. Essentially, with the calendar, we are. Mm -hmm. And we've had some games moved around, obviously, but... Uh, this last weekend, and we'll get to the highlights here coming up in a moment. Give me your big takeaways, what your team has shown you now, specifically from the last two games on the road. Well, I, I think we need to be very careful, Jeff, meaning in the sense of Saturday, Saturday night's win is a, a terrific win, a, 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 as good a win that I've been a part of really in this program. But we can't forget, you know, just quickly brush away, you know, our Thursday night's performance and, and just uh, how we pride ourselves in finishing and weren't able to do that. Now, um, there's certainly some things we can build on. Uh, we talked about the difference in the two words of we've made progress, but progress and if you stop you know, progressing it isn't going to take you anywhere. Um, and, and the group with the leadership that we've had really made some changes and some adjustments over those 48 hours uh, from Friday, from Thursday night to Saturday night. Uh, but we've got to make sure that we continue to, to build and, and stay uncomfortable and, and not maintain. We need to continue to get better. All right, let's take a look. Let's roll the highlights from Thursday night, the Sweeney Center in Kansas City, Missouri. Always a unique setting, tough place to play. Kansas City, a unique matchup for any team with how physical they play. But coach, for the first 28 to 30 minutes of this game, your team brought the fight to the ruse of Kansas City. Let's start there, what you saw early in this contest. Yeah, I mean, to your point, Jeff, you know, Kansas City is about as different as anybody in the league, just the way they defend. And, and Billy's got his guys teed up and locked in, you know, every night. And uh, I was pleased with the way we came out. And, and even just to gap it up to 14 in the, in the second half, and um, I thought we had, had learned some things, you know, from our disappointing performance against Western at home on Saturday. Um, but, you know, to, to the case in point of, of who we've been up until then, we didn't finish the game. And, and uh, you have to play not a terrific 28 minutes, 30 minutes. you got to play for 40 minutes. And um, we, we did not do that. I thought we lost some poise offensively down the stretch in the second half. Um, and some things then got away with us uh, defensively. And, and we need to hang our hat on being that tough-minded defensive team and taking care of the ball. And, and we didn't do that for 40 minutes. And when you, when you don't do that on the road, when you don't do that, um, you know, against good teams. This is going to become the 57-43 with 1235 to go. You and I have talked a lot about it since this thing went down. But as you have, have gone back and processed it, you're watching the highlights here, you've watched the game, I'm sure, numerous times, your biggest takeaways in that final 10-minute stretch. i just disappointed, Jeff. Disappointed in, in the lack of poise from some guys that had been there and done it. Um, I thought we got into some hero ball. You know, heroes are great in a lot of senses, but when you're playing a team game like the basketball is, and um, you know, we weren't sharing the ball terrifically. We turned it over way too many times. Um, and, and I thought that led to us not being um, who we need to be. I thought our offense was also affecting our our defense and we weren't locked in and um, when you're not for 40 minutes this is this right here this graphic it, it says it all that's a disappointing um, disappointing loss I mean and, and I'm not going to sit here and play victim to uh, who wasn't there to it being on the road you know that one was 100% on us. Gate City Bank recap right there 80 to 77 the final Rocky Cruiser a season high 27 points Sam Greasel scoring 23 points as well. You really challenged your group after this one because obviously it stung, frustrating, use all the superlatives that you want. You wanted to get this thing back on track in a hurry and you knew what challenge was facing you guys right in the face on Saturday night. Kind of walk us through the, the 48 hours leading up to the ORU game after this contest. Yeah, Jeff, as much as it was the ORU game coming around the corner, it was just like us need to be in a better version of ourselves. And, and 
Um, I, I think in a sense, me doing more was me pulling back and, and, and really just instilling the ownership in this program. You know, this, this program is under my leadership, but this team in particular is under the leadership of our upperclassmen. Um, and they needed to understand that. Their voices needed to be heard. And um, we did through some things throughout the day Friday um, to challenge them with that. We did some things Friday night at practice to continue to challenge them with that. Uh, we did some things at shoot around, mm -hmm. you know, to continue to challenge them with that. And, and to their credit, um, you know, and, and, and we, we responded in, in a way we need to re respond on the road against a really good team. Well, from disappointment to jubilation on Saturday night at Oral Roberts, 7 and 1 in the Summit League. And what a performance by David Richmond and his Bison men's basketball team. We'll talk about that when we return on the Bison Basketball Show. Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing time. Which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. This means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Rick Electric has been providing electrical services to the FM area since 1964. Rick Electric covers everything from residential needs to large-scale industrial and commercial projects like the Elig Track and Field Complex, a new practice facility at NDSU, and more. New wiring, electrical maintenance, troubleshooting, and repair. You can count on Rick Electric. Quality and safety are their top priorities. And all servicemen coming into your home or business are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Give Rick Electric a call today at 218-233-6194 or go to rickelectric.com. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. And hey, welcome back to the Bison Basketball Show. From a frustrating ending on Thursday night to a big-time matchup on Saturday, the Herd would have to turn things around and flip the script in a hurry with Oral Roberts waiting in the wings. Let's roll the highlights, get right to it. As NDSU on the road at the Maybe Center, the place coach in the last five meetings, five games have been decided by a total of 20 points overall. This one was no different. I knew you had that locked in your mind with how this game was going to be played. Yeah, it sounds a lot like Bison, Bison basketball, Summer League basketball, and even just this season, you know, our victories, our defeats, you know, the, the margin of victory, uh, the margin of defeat, uh, how, how just close those things are and this game was really just a uh, another parallel to that statement you know I, it, it was just a good college basketball game Jeff and, and you were there to witness it I think we led by six they may be led by five other than that it was a whole bunch of lead changes um, there was some big time players making some big time plays there you see Rocky you know and, and uh, just kind of a uh, rocker step move we're just getting his guy off balance and, and rising up a big shot and, and Malik hit a big shot there and it was really a total team effort and, and you know we were we were good we were solid offensively and then we started to really play through the post in the second half but um, when you go on the road and you can hold a, a young man to the caliber of, of Max A. Smith to two for 13 and 18 points on 24 shots that's a real credit to our guys being locked in and focused you know not for 28 not for 30 but for 40 minutes. He challenged the captains they responded coach we're seeing some of the highlights Tyree Eady making some big time plays and this was the uh, three from Ace Miss with seven seconds to go to give them a one point lead. And here you go. Walk me through this. Sam Griesel with the winner. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's an action that we've run. You and I talked about it post game as well. And and to get Sam, you know, downhill on the move, into a position that he's comfortable with, with the floor spaced. And, and Sam has Sam has the effect in, in those big moments down the stretch. He's able to make those plays. And, and fortunately for us, he made it. Um, that's way too good of a look for for a guy like Max A. Smith. And something that we've got to continue to clean up to make sure we're organized as a staff, getting our guys in the correct position. But at, at the end of the day. 
way to go on the road um, to get any kind of victory um, is terrific. And to someone's caliber that Oral Roberts is, you know, we're extremely pleased. First time that ORU's been beaten at the Maybe Center since November the 26th. The team that beat them, it's the only time they've lost this year at home. Some team called Oklahoma State out of the Big 12 Conference. Gate City Bank game recap. You see the numbers there, and I wanted to bring up Tyree Eady. Tied a career high with 18 points. Eady, Greasel, Cruiser, all in their own way, helped impact the outcome of that game. But Tyree seemed to take it even more to heart, more aggressive, specifically from Thursday night where I think he had six points in about 34, 35 minutes. Yeah, I mean, and I think you're seeing the easy things to see. You're seeing points. You're seeing some things that are quantifiable on a box score, Jeff. But um, what, what I saw from Tyree, from Sam, from, from all of our guys, from Rocky included, was not, not even necessarily what I saw, what I felt, mm -hmm. um, what I heard, just the, the vibe, the tone, um, the message that they were given to their other guys that, you know, to take responsibility for, for this team and, and provide some ownership top to bottom. And, and that starts with me, certainly, but that also starts with me, you know, uh, getting them comfortable to own those moments, and they did a terrific job of that. Yep, busy week. Uh, the Bison just got off the road. As we're talking to you right now, St. Thomas Tuesday at USD Thursday, and then out South Dakota State at Frost Arena on Saturday. Laundry needed for everybody, for the guys, but how do you manage this week coming off of this past weekend knowing you got a lot of basketball coming your way. Load up the coffee and, and here we go again, Jeff. You know, uh, this is this is a group that they now, uh, hopefully we're getting closer to getting some guys back. Uh, we, we know who we are, we've got some experience. It's just about figuring out, are, are we gonna be who we are for 28, 30, or are we gonna be who we are for 40? Um, when we're 40, we're pretty darn good. When we're not, you know, we're capable of getting beat by, by anybody. And um, th this is a fun stretch. You, you can look at it any way you want, but we're gonna play a lot of basketball in a short amount of time, and this is what you sign up for. As we mentioned, uh, the schedule this week, it is uh, busy. It is a plenty uh, on the road coming up. You got the uh, the women there to go on Thursday against uh, USD, the men Thursday against USD, the same on Saturday. You see the game times and where you can watch, obviously, WDAY Extra has the women's call. We've got the men's call on the radio side as well. Coach. Heck of a weekend. Great win on Saturday, and all the best to you and the guys this I'm week. Sure, I'm going to see you again Maybe. soon, Maybe. It's possible. Appreciate coach. you, sir. Yep, absolutely. That's the head coach, David Richmond, coming up. It, it wasn't stress free for the NDSU women either this past weekend. Jory Collins, the head coach, joins us on the other side. Oh, Bud Light sells a retro tie <laughs> Have you tried these yet? Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tata, the loudest flavors ever. Another rock and roll weekend. <laughs> Burgers, better with Pepsi. A country offers a wide range of internal growth. If you have a goal in mind and you put your mind to it, your successes can be endless. There are so many jobs within this company that you can rotate into. I like challenges. A country gives me challenges. Yeah, A country is a great place to work. There's plenty of flexibility. You're never tied to your desk. There's a team here that is always there for you. Yeah, grab your role and run with it. And always be aware of the opportunities because they're in front of you. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. Oh, Bud Light sells a retro title. <laughs> Have you tried these yet? Bud Light sells a retro title. The loudest flavors ever.
Well, I'd like to tell you that for the NDSU women, things were stress-free this last weekend. As we just talked about with David Richmond, what life was like on the road at Kansas City and down in Tulsa, that wasn't the case for the head coach, Jory Collins, as the Bison women battled at home Thursday, Saturday. Two similar games, coach, from a standpoint of how they played out, how you yep. won on Saturday, how you fought, and I'm sure the blood pressure maybe a little higher. Elevated. Yeah, it, Jeff, <laughs> it's been like that uh, all season for us. Every game we've played has been kind of a knockdown drag out. Um, and we haven't ended on the right side of that enough for us. Um, really fortunate to do that on Saturday. Thursday was one that got away from us. Uh, played well enough in spots to build double-digit leads in both games. Uh, had some players really step up and make some, some terrific plays. We're starting to see some things come together a little bit offensively and, and, and some roles shaking out, uh, which is way too late right now, but at least it's better than never. Um, looking to put it together and get some consistency here going forward. How can the way those games played out benefit you here in the last month of the regular season coming up and into March in the Summer League tournament? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to take every single game as a learning experience. And, and like I said, you know, we had a 10-point lead on UMKC on, on Thursday night going into the fourth quarter. Uh, we watched the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, how did we let that get away from us uh, at home? Um, you know, Saturday, the same thing. We're able to build a, a double-digit lead in that game. Um, they cut it back, even took the lead. Uh, this particular game, we were able to make the plays and come back and secure it. Uh, not easy, not pretty. Uh, but at this point in the year, you're taking every win you can get. Uh, each one of those possessions matters, and, and we were really for you. We had a couple big-time offensive rebounds, a couple toughness plays against Oral Roberts that we didn't have Thursday against UMKC and some big moments that I think let us get that win. Let's right, take a look at the highlights from game number one Thursday night. You watch that one on WDAY Extra with Dom Izzo, Amy Ruley, and Logan Campbell, and uh, a Kansas City team that has some feistiness to them, has a little bit of fight. And uh, you're still working, getting, trying to get everybody back into the rotation with, with health and asking different players to step up. And uh, you're getting that from some unique spots with your team right yeah, now. Yeah, we did. You know, this was hopefully our last game here where we were really shorthanded uh, as far as not having Emily Binky there as, a, as our backup post player. We got Hildebrandt, got to play some more in this game. But we needed Emily Dietz to play well. Uh, you know, she went 8 for 10 from the field and, and really established us on the inside. Hildebrandt got to play, you know, some minutes now at the 5 just without Binky in that particular game. She went 3 for 4 for 3, did a really good job stretching the floor, uh, and Ryan played terrific in this game as well. It was one of those where, you know, we had a couple kids play really good. Dietz and Ryan were there. Heaven had an off-shooting night. Mm -hmm. Olivia had an off-shooting night. It's been hard for us to get everybody, uh, you know, on the same page on a nightly basis, but different players players stepped up in this game to give us a lead and uh, give us a chance going into the fourth. I know Ryan did not have her best weekend last weekend on the road overall on the offensive side. What'd you see from her out of that response? How'd you challenge her last week in practice? Yeah, I mean, we just, we met and talked about, you know, it's for us to be good, it's necessary for you to be a, a consistent player for us. And she knows, you know, last week was a struggle. Uh, this weekend, obviously much better for her. There's still some things she can tighten up on that end of the floor. Uh, um, but it, it, that's just how we're going. We got to have Emily Dietz, we got to have Heaven Hamling, we got to have Ryan Cobbins play consistently. And then if we can get Olivia to keep making shots, um, you know, that really helps us out. Seeing Emily Dietz making some plays, as Coach talked about, the, uh, the local talented product, obviously. And watching some of the highlights here down the stretch. Kind of roll me through what's going through your yeah, mind. Yeah, you know, late in the game, we gave up a, a really tough offensive rebound uh, late. We needed one stop with a few seconds left. We didn't get it. Um, had a draw up there for heaven. Had a pretty decent look from 25 feet. It was still a deep one, but I know she'd love to have that shot again. Uh, like I said, the, the margin uh, for error is razor thin, and those, you know, offensive rebound there late, uh, are things that we got to secure for our team to give ourselves the best chance. Gate City Bank game recap as a lead in the fourth quarter battling. Uh, unfortunately, Kansas City comes from behind to win that one late, 67 to 62. You talked a lot about Emily Dietz. What is, what's her presence mean? Taking that COVID year and obviously trying to solidify some leadership with some of the, the struggles and the, the players in and out that you have had. Yeah, well, she's been, you know, the best thing that I can say about Emily Dietz is she's there every day. You know, the availability is something that has been 
great for her since we've been here. Uh, you know, maybe potentially playing has been up and down at most points, but she's been a pretty consistent player. What she brings is maturity uh, to our team. She's been through uh, a lot of battles, a lot of games, and a lot of seasons, and, you know, so nothing does, phases her too much. She's kind of a calming presence for us, Jeff, and uh, something that's needed with a lot of youth that we do have on our team. Yep. Well, as we talked about, in a perfect world, it would have been just, you know, a smooth uh, 40 minutes of basketball on uh, Saturday afternoon at the Shield Center inside the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. But uh, a lot of similarities with the script of how this thing played out overall, Coach. Let's talk about what you saw early in the game from your team responding from that loss on Thursday night. Yeah, I mean, we, we played a terrific first quarter in this game. I think we threw up, you know, 30 points in the first quarter. And, um, you know, Olivia went four for four from three. Uh, in the first, you know, 10 minutes of action, they were guarding us a certain way. We had anticipated and we're moving the ball really well, stepping into shots uh, in rhythm um, and, and just making the plays that we talked about. You know, they, they ended up changing defenses. It took us a little while in the second quarter to get acclimated uh, to that. Uh, it ended up being a battle all the way down, but we had multiple different people making plays early in the game, finding the right players. Uh, Katie Deaton with two terrific plays here, uh, getting downhill and staying with it, and then she had two great passes for threes as well. This and one was super tough. Um, those are the kind of things she can bring to our table. Uh, Heaven Hamlin kind of did her thing, got back on track, had a tough shooting night Thursday, uh, but came back, I think gets 18 big ones in this game. And in this particular game, Jeff, you know, the difference in the UMKC, I thought we missed some loose ball, 50-50 balls down the stretch. Mm -hmm. um, in this game, we made those plays. We had a big offensive rebound here uh, from Liv, and then she gets another, Emily Dietz gets another one to secure it really late in this game uh, to really give us a chance to finish. And uh, that's been the difference. We either make those plays or we don't. And, and with our margin for error, that's winning or losing for us right now. It was great in this game, uh, particularly to see us make those plays late and, and, and finish a ball game. You knew Heaven Hamlin was not going to be denied two nights in a row offensively. Right. I mean, she's just she's too good and, and too consistent of a practice player and worker uh, to have much trouble for very long. So one day it's one thing. Um, had a great stop here late, needed it up to their ball at the end. Uh, Abby Schulte with active hands played really well there down the stretch. Gate City Bank game recap, a, a similar type of blueprint, different ending, and a nice win, a quality win for Jory Collins and the NDSU women. How about Olivia Skibble? Career high 18 points, four threes. You, you got her into the lineup involved last weekend, and She's taking advantage of her time right now. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, she, she stepped up to the plate. We've needed some more scoring. Uh, she's done a good job. She, you know, she didn't shoot it well on Thursday night, but again, that's one day. Uh, the other three out of the four play times she's gotten to start, she's been uh, a big-time contributor for us. All right, big games this weekend. Come on out, pack the shack Thursday and Saturday for the NDSU women. And, Coach, another opportunity for your team against the top two programs in the Summit League with USD and SDSU in town. Yeah, I mean, we're looking forward to it. There is no... Uh, you know, we're playing with nothing to lose. You got to go out and, and we got to show up and fight. Um, I love the battle we gave both those teams the first time. We were really shorthanded. I'm hoping this time we're as healthy as we've been since before Christmas. Um, just having those extra bodies and extra roles uh, give us a chance to hang in there and see what happens. All right, should be some great matchups. Great opportunity for the NDSU women. Coach, appreciate the time as always. Thanks great, for stopping thanks, by. Jeff. NDSU women's basketball head coach Jory Collins coming up. We'll meet with a key member of his staff. Dylan Geiser joins us on the other side on the Bison Basketball Show. Oh, Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tide Ice. Have you tried these yet? Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tide Ice, the loudest flavors ever. Better starts with convenience. Our 43 convenient locations make running errands easy. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing time. 
which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. This means better ways to brighten your day. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. Oh, Bud Light Seltzer Retro Tile. <laughs> Try these yet? Bud Light Salsa Retro Tata, the loudest flavors ever. And one final segment here on the Bison Basketball Show. Very happy to be joined by NDSU Women's Basketball Assistant Coach Dylan Geiser. Coach, you've been around Coach Collins for quite some time now. Talk about your guys' connection and your love for the game of basketball and coaching. Where did that develop from? Yeah, I got to know Jory um, at Emporia State as an undergrad, working for him as a practice player and student assistant. Um, and then ended up going to the University of Kansas um, as a mm -hmm. graduate assistant where he ended up joining me for a year. Um, and then when he got the job up here, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. I know him so well and know exactly what he was going to be wanting and needing out of an assistant um, and, and really was looking forward to the opportunity to continue working for him. Yep, it's been a season here for this basketball team. You guys have had some ups and downs. How has the character and the leadership of this team been uh, tested from your perspective, the coaching staff, and how the leaders have uh, paid off here? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a little frustrating, obviously, with some of the results not going the way we wanted. Um, but just with the leadership that we have, you know, Emily Deeds, Heaven Hamling have played multiple years of mm -hmm. high-level basketball um, and know that every season has up and downs, whether you're winning games or not. Um, and continue to stay the course, and, and the results we want will come. Yep, great measuring stick opportunity this weekend with USD and SDSU. What, what are those challenges like from, from your perspective, Coach? For me, I love them because you get to test yourself against the best, um, and, and you know if you win, you beat the best. Um, and that's really something that we've talked about as a program is, you know, we want to get to that level, and there's no way other way to show that you're that level besides beating those guys. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. should be fascinating. Thursday, USD. Saturday, South Dakota State, as those two obviously are the, the benchmarks, the teams to beat in the Summit League. Coach, always appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on. Should be fun this weekend at the Shack, right? Should be a great time. Yeah, absolutely. It should be a great atmosphere. Yep. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. There you go. That's NDSU Women's Basketball Co Assistant Coach Dylan Geiser. My name is Jeff Colhane. Thank you for watching and tuning in to the Bison Basketball Show. The Bison Basketball Show is presented by Gate City Bank for a better way of life. This has been an exclusive presentation.